Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. <clears throat> Brother Henry. And I've come to Westwood Village to uh, preach the Gospel. And uh, there's a lot of uh, Persian Jews over here, so I thought I'd read from Hebrews 8, 9, 10, and uh, maybe Stephen's speech uh, in Acts 7. Well, let's see how it goes. Uh, God could change things with what He wants me to say, and that's what I'm hoping happens. He speaks through me tonight to get to these lost sinners. There's uh, people that are filled with demons. As I walked up here, I parked uh, out on the street uh, down uh, north of Wilshire and walked here. A lot of demonic activity going on within people. Uh, so let's see how this goes. I was on this street corner uh, a week ago, a week ago or two, two weeks ago, and it's a pretty good place where I like to stand in the street preach. Come out to share God's holy, precious word tonight. A lot of you have Bibles and won't open them up. Don't want to learn about what God has for you in your life. You're living on your own. No purpose in life. I come out to share God's holy word with you. I know there's a lot of Persian Jews that live and uh, come out to this Westwood village. I've met a lot of you. And uh, some of you are receptive to Jesus and the new, new covenant, the Barit Hadashah. So I thought I'd come out and talk about the new covenant, which washed away the old covenant. from Hebrews 8, 
Many theologians think that uh, Paul wrote this letter. I agree with them. Reading in chapter 8. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Listen up, Jews. And with the house of Judah. Not according to the... Excuse me. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. With a capital M, my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. In that, he says, a new covenant he has made the first obsolete. Now, what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready and vanished away. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary for a tabernacle was prepared the first part in which was the lampstand and the table and the showbread. Oh, which David ate from, he wasn't supposed to. Which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all. David, what about David? What about David? Did, did David go to hell? Do you know if David No, he to repented. Hell? He's dancing in paradise know, right now. Do you know now. what the country of Israel? You know Israel. I, I'm preaching. I don't have time to, to talk Jewish. to you. I'm Jewish. Well, that's fine. Okay. Well, well it, and you I, believe that Jesus Christ David, is the Messiah? David was a, a man question. after God's own heart. Is David in hell, yes or no? You tell me. Is David in hell, yes or do, no? Do you believe in the Sheol? Torah, the Torah, do you believe in the world of the dead? The Torah says that David do you believe was, in the a world God, of the dead? was a man after God's own Listen, heart. Listen, answer my question. Do you believe in the world of the dead? No. Is there a hell? According to who? According to God's word. Is it in the Torah? Yes. Where? Sheol. Sheol? Yeah. Sheol. Is David in Sheol? What do you think? I do not. Okay, good. According well, to what, the what's going to happen to you when you die? He is the. What's going to happen to you, UCLA, when you die? Do you have a, an atonement for your sins? Did God not tear down the temple in 70 AD? It's because of the Jewish people that Christians in America Right, and that have you're going to come freedom, back through the Gentiles preaching the, it's the good the news of Jesus of Israel, Christ. Abram. Amen. You know, before he was you know Abraham, what the Barit Hadashah is? You know that before he was Abraham, he was Abram? Abram? Yeah, right. So that doesn't... Hebrew. Okay. Israeli. So who are the chosen people? Those through the tribe of Judah. You remember that? Because God can raise up stones. You remember Don't that. praise his you, name. You remember that. Worship Jesus, your Messiah. He's already come. Or you're going to go to that hell I talked about. Anyways, 
talking of the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on the sides with gold, in which were the golden pots that had the manna. Oh, the food from heaven. Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim, all oh, the angels of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. This is how it used to be. But into the second part, the high priest went alone, once a year, not without blood, which he had offered for himself and for the people's sins, committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicated this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regards to the conscience. Talking about your conscience, the voice of your spirit, concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of Reformation. Oh, but listen to this, Jews. But Christ came as high priest, amen, of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves, which only covered sins, didn't remove sins, but with his own precious blood. He entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption for you sinners. You can be reconciled to God. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, he never sinned, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Oh, so much more. So much more. Uh, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, people. I'm reading right out of God's Holy Word. It should affect you. And for this reason, He is the mediator of the new covenant. That's Jesus. By means of death, for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that you all broke, by the way, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. You can have life after death and not be condemned. I just want to say, first of all, I like what you very, it's very insightful. Oh. I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, I just want to know if it's okay if I get a picture with you with my friends. If only if you're okay. okay with yeah, no, 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 no worries. That's okay? Okay. Also, give us how tall are you, by the way? Six ten. Wow. Yeah, put this on Facebook so a lot of unbelieving Jews will uh, we'll spread the word. repent. Got it. Get it? This guy's a Jew right here. What are you doing there? Thank you so God much. Bless you. God bless you. Right, here, up. Go ahead. Oh, he wants a picture. You oh, didn't get one. No, no. I, I mean, I'm you want him in it? Or you want a picture of him? No, I want a picture of him. Okay. Well, with me? 
Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Come on, okay. One more time. Three. Three pictures. Go smile. Okay. Thank you so much. Bless you. Turn to Jesus, okay? Yeshua HaMashiach. I was reading from Hebrews 9. 16, I left off. For where there is a testament, there must also be necessity, be the death of a testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead. So well, we're talking about a will. Since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. That's sin. Saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins, people. This is what I'm going over. Saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise, he sprinkled the blood, sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. Here we go. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Talking about an atonement, not killing a dead chicken like the Orthodox Jews are doing. That's not, that's not even relevant. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of these things in the heaven should be purify, purified with these. but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another, he then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He died for you. What will you do with that? Praise God. And as it is appointed uh, for men, to die once, but after that, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Who the fuck? Who's 
Oh, I was just reading from Hebrews 9 from God's holy word so that your conscience would be convicted of sin. To understand that Christ paid the price for sin once and for all. He went into the most holy place with His blood for your transgressions and iniquity. This sacrifice takes away sin and gives you a clear conscience. No more riddled with guilt and shame. No longer being convicted for the sins that you've done. You don't have to go lay your head on your pillow in regret anymore. You can be born again. Born by the Spirit of God. This is what I'm offering for you people. I encourage you to go home and, and read God's holy word. So that you can be saved from the wrath to come. You don't have to burn in hell for all eternity. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't come out here and express these things. You need to repent and turn to Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to read from Acts 7. Stephen was a man of God. And they stoned him to death. The Jews stoned him to death for what he had to say. Oh, well, they grit his teeth and they stoned him to death. And Paul, who later got converted, well, he was there. His name was Saul. And he held the coats for this murderous act to be done. Says so then the high priest said, Are these things so? Reading from Acts 7. And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran and said to them, Get out of your country and from your relatives and come to a land where I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from there, when his father was dead, he moved him to this land in which you now dwell. He's talking to the Jews, the Pharisees, the religious Jews of the law. And God gave him no inheritance in it not even enough to set his foot on. But even when Abraham had no child, he promised to give it to him for possession and to his descendants after him. But God spoke in this way that his descendants would dwell in a foreign land and that they would bring them into bondage and, and oppress them 400 years. And the nation to whom they will be in bondage, I will judge, said God. And after that, they shall come out and serve me in this place. Then he gave them the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him, and delivered him 
out of all of his troubles and gave him favor and wisdom in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine and a great trouble came over all the land of Egypt and Canaan. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And the second time Joseph was made known to his brothers. And Joseph's family became known to the Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all his relatives to him, 75 people. So Jacob went down, excuse me, to Egypt and he died. He and our fathers, this is Stephen again talking to the Jews. And they were carried back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham bought for a sum of money from the sons of Hamar, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose who did not know Joseph. This man dealt treacherously with our people and opposed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they may not live. Killed a lot of babies. At this time, Moses was born and was well pleasing to God. And he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Now when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of, one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. He killed him. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand. But they did not understand. And the next day, he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brethren. Why do you wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away, saying, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you did the Egyptian the other day? Then at this saying, Moses fled and became a dweller in the land of Midian, where he had two sons. And when 40 years had passed, and it, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. And as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Oh, the God of the living. They're in heaven right now. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Oh, he feared God. Moses feared God. Praise Jesus. Bible study tonight, folks. Saint Aaron. Oh, excuse me. Where did I leave off?
excuse me for that. Verse 33, Then the Lord said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses whom they rejected saying, who made you ruler and a judge is the one God sent to be a ruler and deliverer to the land by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. He's gone through the whole thing, folks. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like him from your brethren. Him you shall hear. This is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey, but rejected. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, make us gods to go before us, as for this Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. It's idolatry. Nothing new under the sun. When God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You also took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God, Remphan. Oh, that's like the star of David that you have made for yourselves, which is not in the Tanakh. Images which you made to worship, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon into exile. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witnesses in the wilderness as he appointed instructing Moses to make in according to the pattern he had seen. Which our fathers having received it in turn also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the day of David. Who found favor before God and asked him to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Solomon built the temple. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? <laughs> Has my hand not made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did so to you. So do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers 
and murderers. Who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. These were the Jews. This is Stephen speaking. And they gnashed at him with their teeth. Oh, they're probably gnashing their teeth right now in hell. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said look I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the 